Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today I want to touch base on all my Toonie Terrors, as I do have a decent collection of them. Now we're going to start off with Nosferatus, okay? This is a uh, original vampire from, I think, 1927. Was a very, I think it even goes back beyond that, I think. Uh, it's actually the um, first vampire movie that was actually in... Um, silent films and stuff and obviously they made them through the years I think the latest one came out in 2007 and it has William Dafoe in it but anyway it is a vampire type character uh, he is definitely not your traditional Dracula or anything like that but he is one of the originals in my opinion but anyway uh, as you can see his arm is taped up because when I originally got him I was kind of moving his arms around and it snapped. I'm like, okay, that's not a good thing. There's no articulation in the elbows. So I had to re-glue it again because obviously the glue didn't hold. So this time around I just previously glued it and had the wife tape up the arm. So we'll just let it dry. But anyway, we're going to get into uh, looking at this particular figure. He has some gigantic hands. And what I'm going to do is see if I can move him in a little bit here. This way you can get what you see. Alright, now, as you see when he's coming around the corner here, he does have some pretty big hands, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the camera back. There we go. And just move the camera in. There you go. That's what he looks like. He's very cool looking, okay? And it also comes with... Where is he at? Right there. Forgot to put him up there. The rat. I would assume, because I've never actually seen the films, I'm assuming it's probably his friend or something. The rat is associated with Nosferatus. But anyway, this is Nosferatus. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Get him up and out of the way. Put you down here. We're going to get into the, the creeper from the creep show. Now, I'm going to pull this back because I don't have him on a stand because I'm still trying to figure out how to get him on the stand without him falling over. As you can clearly see, he is very cool looking. Let me straighten out that camera. There we go. Okay. Articulation wise, in most cases, the heads do move and his arms do move up and down. Now, it does come with a lantern which as you can see I had to glue that as well because these pieces here for a NECA figure they're very fragile okay but anyway it does go like this where you can actually well you're supposed to actually squeeze it in there but I'm not going to mess with it but he's supposed to hold the lantern but it is a creeper from the creep show okay and that's what he looks like now I still yet to figure out how to get him on the stand without him toppling over because for some reason, he uh, when he's standing on the stand, he's kind of leaning forward because of his legs and stuff. And his legs don't have much art, uh, articulation, so that's a no-no. But anyway, let me show you what it looks like. And that's the creeper, okay? Again, articulation. And there's also no articulation in this one here. There is in the hands. You can move the hands a little bit. And I believe the arms do move. Yeah, they do. Say, Okay, they do move. Alright, but anyway, that is the creeper, okay? Let's move him out of the way here. And then we're going to move on to Pennywise, the original 1996 miniseries based with Tim Curry. Alright, now before we do that, let me get that in there. Alright, he's cool, I like his color scheme. There you go. And then move the camera back in. There you go. Now, he's from the 1996 miniseries. It's not, in fact, a TV series, I mean, uh, a movie at all. It's actually based off of, uh, like I said, a miniseries. It was on NBC, I believe it was. It was a three-night uh, event. And, obviously, they made a new version of it in 2017, which I'm going to show you here, right after this one here. But, anyway, it's got some really cool color schemes. I do have the full-size NECA version of this guy. And I also got the full-size version, a couple of uh, full-size versions of the 2017 version as well. And the full-size NECA version comes with an ungodly amount of balloons. Okay? But I had, because the balloons are so heavy, 
he kind of topples over. So I keep the balloons separate. So I keep that in mind. All right. But anyway, that is Pennywise from 1996. All right, now we're moving on to the other Pennywise here. Now, keep in mind, these are cartoonish. They're not movie accurate. All right. That's what he looks like. Now a little thing about this one here is <clears throat> there is a two-part movie based on this particular character. All right, uh, there is um, I believe it's going into production. It was green lit. There is going to be a part three. How they're going to do it, I don't know because this particular uh, version of uh, Pennywise, I'm assuming the 1996 version is too, is a shapeshifter. So he keeps coming back every 27 years. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Or is that the uh, Jeepers Creepers? I think that's Jeepers Creepers, but I could be wrong about that. But anyway, he keeps coming back, put it that way. Now, what they're going to do with the third movie, I don't know. All right. But a lot of people didn't like the second one, but that's obvious because the first one, when it comes out, they're super impressed with it. And then they come out with the second one and say, eh, not so much. Right. But I liked it. I enjoyed it. I like the crab feature. Uh, the crab version of uh, Pennywise and he was cool looking but towards the end they killed him rather easily by pulling it, uh, ripping his heart out but anyway this is Pennywise now this guy is really cool looking let me show you what he looks like look at that color scheme and everything now the suit in itself uh, according to NECA is a little darker than your traditional Pennywise uh, the uh, the NECA versions, the full-size ones, are in fact a lighter gray, but these are cool looking. And as you can see, he does have a very cartoonish feature about him. It's not like a traditional one. His feet, very cool. All right, moving on. Now we're going to move into the Michael Myers here, guys. All right, we're going to hold off on that one and get into this one here. All right. This is the 1978 version. I'm going to put both pumpkins up here. Because there is two particular Michael Myers versions. Alright. Pull that back a little bit. Alright. Now the other one I'm going to show you here is pretty much the same as this one here. Except the color scheme's a little bit darker. I believe, yeah. And obviously he's got blood dripping from his mask, which makes me uh, think that it's you know part two um, I think it came out in 1980 81 but anyway it's where he uh, gets stabbed in well actually in the first movie I think he got stabbed towards the end of the movie but uh, this one's gonna make me think that it's part two put it that way all right but anyway this is Michael Myers and as you can see the actual pumpkins are different in color all right I guess to separate them as you can see, they are a different color. Even the faces are different. Well, not different, different, but color scheme. Alright. Now, with that in mind, let's give you a close-up shot of him. Now, when it comes to the knife, as you can see, it's got a little, technically how they look at it, it's a shine. Okay. And that's what his face looks like. Alright. Head does move a little bit and moves up and down too a little bit too. Arms move. The legs do move at the hips. Alright, but that's what he looks like. Too many terrors. Can't go wrong with them. They're cool. Very cool figures. Alright, so let's put him down here. I'm going to leave the pumpkins down here and show you the other Michael Myers real quick. I'm going to pull this back. And we're going to do it this way. Okay, I'll show you. Now you see what I mean by the blood, okay? And obviously the color scheme of the hair is a little bit different as well, but not much. All right, but it does have a little blood. It's the same mold. Don't get me wrong. But as you can see, the hair is a little bit different in color, but like I said, not by much. Now the knife on this one here is the bloody version, okay? Where the other one is not so much, okay? But they are the exact same mold. Even the hands are different in color. 
All right, enough about those guys. Let's move on to Jason Voorhees. Originally came out in 1981, but he actually never made an appearance in the movie at all. It was his mother doing all the killing in the very first movie. He did make an appearance in the second one, and he's been doing it ever since. Right. Again, you can see the machete. It's got that shine appeal as they look at it. All right. This, I believe, because of the um, the jacket, is from part three. Okay, and I think, or part four. I'm not positive. I'm not 100% accurate on the movies because I have not seen them in such a long time. But articulation-wise, obviously the arms do move, and so does this move. This one moves too. It's tight. I don't want to force it. Because I showed you that very first one and it ended up snapping on me. I said, no, I'm not going to do that no more. Okay, these guys stand up pretty good for the most part. But there are a few characters here like that creeper. He will not stand up. Okay, even if I put him on a stand because of the way he leans, yeah, he's a big pain in the butt. But anyway, this is Jason Voorhees. Let me give you a close up of the mask. It's pretty cool looking. Alright. Again, cartoonish figure. Okay, it's not movie accurate. All right, moving on. Let's get into Ash from the Evil Dead series. He's from um, Army of Darkness. Okay, well, that's the best one of the bunch, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong; the Evil Dead movies are really cool, but I like the uh, Army of the Dead because it's very cartoonish in a way. It's comedic, and Bruce Campbell, he's a funny guy. I also watched the actual TV series based on him on Showtime or was it HBO? Anyway, I got all three seasons sitting on my hard drive. They are very good. It's a shame they had to put an end to it. It was a really good show. But anyway, Bloody Variant, okay? And as you can see, he's got the chainsaw, right? And he's also got a shotgun, or his boomstick as they call it. Alright. There's got a little blood on the face there, guys. Like I said, as you can see, the body and everything is very cartoonish like. Alright. Whoop. I'm starting to get overcrowded here. So let's get into this guy here. Now, this guy right here is Mr. Freddy Krueger. Hello. Now, I will tell you this about this one here. This stand, it was a royal pain in the ass to get him on that stand. But once I got him on there, he was good to go. And again, the blades. Okay, Christmas sweater. All right, the fedora. All right, now, these guys are cool. I know why they do these. Now, these run around $14, $15 a piece. But the detail, they're worth it in my opinion. If you collect, obviously. All right, let's get into Reagan here. Now this one here, she's from the 1973 movie The Exorcist. I switched the head out simply because I got—I'll show you the head here in a second. Uh, because when I had her standing on the shelf without the stand itself, uh, she would always fall over because of the puke. Uh, made her top heavy, so she kept falling over, and I'd find her on the ground. I was like, "What the heck?" So I had to buy some more NECA stands and put her on the stand. But anyway, this is Reagan. I'll show you the other head here in a second. All right. She is a pukey mess there. She done puked all over herself. As you can see, she's got small feet, so she would be hard to stand. And I want to tell you this, when I put this on the stand, you got to bend the feet a little bit so you can actually get her to balance out. And I kind of pulled the arms forward so she wouldn't fall over or look like she's getting ready to topple over. You just got to play around with it. But anyway, let me show you the asteroid heads. And the puke. Okay, this right here is the actual head. And here's the puke. I'll put it right in her mouth. 
No, let's go this way. There it is. And it's like, <laughs> but anyway, this is Reagan from the 1973 Exorcist movie. And they've done a bunch of other ones, and I believe they're in the process of doing some more Exorcist movies. Not 100% sure if they're actually rebooting it, or whatever the case may be, but all in all, most of those movies are absolutely cool to watch, okay, if you're into that kind of stuff. Alright, but anyway, that is Reagan. I'm going to show you the boat. The boat comes from Pennywise 2017. I forgot to show you that earlier. And right, let me just get a proper grip on this here. All right, there she is right there. Oh, that's the boat from the movie. I haven't seen that movie in a while. I need to get back into that again. I'll watch them both back to back. All right. Now that's the boat. Okay. Don't rock the boat, baby. All right. We're almost done here, guys. We're going to get into the Grady Twins. They are from The Shining. As you can see, they're standing on a pedestal. All right. Now, they were very hard to put on there. But once I got them on there, we were good to go. But anyway, I do have a pre-order based on these guys here. Uh, they're actual NECA figures. And I got the Grady Twins coming in once it, you know, the pre-order comes in. Might not be for a while though, okay? Okay, and that is what those look like in the back. Yeah, these guys are cool. Horror twins, okay? Now, a little known thing about this, the actual girls that actually um, did this movie only did this one particular movie and never went back into movies after that. They went there and they did their own thing after that. But they, never, they stayed away from the Hollywood and everything. But that's what these guys look like. Right. The Greedy Twins. The Greedy Twins. No, okay. Alright, now, we're going to get into this guy here. This here is Victor Crowley. He is the newest one of the months. I just got him a couple days ago. Alright. He's an ugly bastard. Now, Kane Hodder, who actually does Jason, and I think three, all the way up to six, I think. He did a bunch of the movies, but anyway, Kane Hodder is the one that does uh, Victor Crowley in these movies. And there's a total of four of them, I think. I got them all sitting on my hard drive. But he's quite muscular looking, as you can see. All right. He comes with the axe. I uh, left it on his hand there. All right. I got him on a stand, so. Now, the unique thing about these particular uh, figures, they're too many terrors. You think because they're small, that you can't use the actual traditional NECA stands, you can. Okay, they drill the holes big enough for you to use them. They're nice and tight too, that's the main thing. But this is Victor Crowley. Now I'm going to show you the last one that I have. As you can see, he's a little deformed. Alright. Let's get into this guy here. This is my all-time favorite because of the way it looks. Um, he is, in fact, Ghostface. On the screen movies. Okay. There are a few other um, Toonie Terrors. Like, I want to get Elvira, but they got her in a four set, and I'm not willing to spend over $100 for those. I'm not going to do that. And there's also a Pinhead, but that's a future thing. But anyway, this is Ghostface. Okay. The articulation on this one here, as you can see, wow. It's like so. Let me stab myself in the face. Alright. I like the design of this thing too, see. These arms here, they do move around. Now, the thing about Ghostface, when I first uh, watched these movies, I said, okay, it's just a serial killer in a robe and a mask. And I didn't think much more about it because I just never put him on the pedestal like Jason or Michael Myers or Pinhead. But as of late, my opinions have changed about that. I do have a uh, Fun World mask based on Ghostface. And it's got the straps hanging off the sides and everything. But, um, yeah, that's Ghostface. Okay. All right. With that in mind, guys, that is it on my Toonie Terrors. So far, that's what I have in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be pushing out some more videos. This is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day.